Let's kick it. Hello and welcome to what's new in Whistler 2267. Now as you can see straight off the bat there's two new things straight away. One is this snazzy new Whistler background picture and another is the broken JPEG rendering on the desktop. Now JPEG rendering works everywhere else but on the desktop whether you choose that picture or any other picture that's a JPEG they all end up broken when you try to apply them in various, they get to various parts of the image before they decide to die. Mostly they get to the top, the, oh that one, it's professional, that's the professional one's the best one, it gets the furthest to down. So yeah, that's one of the first bugs encountered in this build. One of the other bugs encountered is if you modify the theme by uncommenting bits of it like I have done, then this preview here gets broken. It's, it ends up with a grey, well, a big grey box on the top of it. I don't know why that is. So you can set it to default, and that works fine. But then if you select professional, if you select professional, the keyboard's not working for some reason. Then it ends up like that. And if you apply it, then obviously it, everything works. Well, everything looks fine, it doesn't quite work altogether because as you can see the top of the windows haven't themed, they're still the classic style. Now this happened, no matter what I did to the theme uncommenting in it, it um, this happened, as long as I uncommented something then the top of the top of the windows didn't theme properly, I don't know why, even if I uncommented something that was not used in the theme, like the champagne colour scheme entries. If I uncommented them and just left everything else as default, these broke, so I don't know why. I looked at the DLL um, header and the um, the checksum, and that's not set, so it's not to do with that. So there must be some sort of internal check somewhere, but I don't know why everything else works, because you can see these have got the magenta and red, like they did in the last build. So I don't know why they're okay, but the title bars aren't. And that sort of brings me on to one of the first things I want to talk about today, and that is how this theming was defeating the people at Microsoft, and how much work it was taking to implement it properly. If we open up the actual contents of the theme in a file, now this is stored as Unicode in the um, MS theme file, so you have to, well, to open it up, I just have to extract it and add a bomb to the start of it. But otherwise, yeah, you can see this is all the stuff, the champagne, colour schemes commented out. And most of these globals here, look, you can see that they don't know if it's working or what it does. So that's a comment ended by somebody at Microsoft. So obviously they either had somebody new on the team doing this, or a lot of people sort of going backwards and forwards who didn't know what they were doing. You can see these other two things are highlight text and menu highlight, they're commented out. But the main problems aren't with anything down here, it's with the it's one, the edit boxes here. As you can see, somebody added a comment, Mr. Heliar, I think that's how you interpret Microsoft IDs, it's initial surname, and it says remove the edit control theme in until issues with the borders and read-only styles can be resolved. Now, everything seems to work fine in this, when I initially uncommented everything it was working fine with the window theming and everything and the edit boxes were still blue. For some reason they set the carrot to the downward arrow of a combo box. Even when you uncomment that though it doesn't turn the carrot to the to that image so I don't know quite why they set that to that particular image but yeah all that is commented, all the edit box stuff. Also if we go down to the list view stuff it's down here somewhere somewhere. So you see all the menu stuff is commented out as well and with a comment that that may be cut out there. We shall see if it is or not. I don't think it is. And there we go with the list view stuff. This also was defeating people at Microsoft. It says it has too many problems to turn on currently and that's including the 
purple on think list views you, you know what I mean when I open up the window and like this this stuff this is just all the stuff that's too problematic to turn on as you can see the text hardly you can hardly see the text but it's just a matter of colors rather than technical problems so I don't know what issues they were having with that internally but it seems to work okay so yeah I think that's all we can all that can be gleaned from that that the list views and the edit boxes weren't quite working properly and yeah I think everything else all the tooltip stuff also commented out as well as the balloon I've uncommented that bit so you can see that bit when we get a balloon and these font things here they crash the well they don't Mm. They sort of crash the the display um, the theme switching thing on the thing. If you uncomment these, any fonts basically that's not the global one, it causes this thing. What I mean, if you select that, it causes this to error out, and it says there's not enough storage available to process this command. So a generic error, but I don't know why it does that. So yeah, I think that's all about it for the theme. Another thing that got a whole lot worse in this build compared to the last is on the CD properties, CD drive properties, and it's autoplay. As you can see here, some mess has been made of this. The text doesn't render properly, and the icons aren't showing up if they're ever if they were ever there at all. And you also can't tell which media type this corresponds to because there's no clues. So the last one's obviously general because there's no specific action to take. So yeah, if we look at the last build, and I don't know if I mentioned it, it's been slightly broken for a while, I can't, f can't remember if I mentioned it or not, if I excised it in the interest of time. But yeah, finally when I click on it, yeah, you can see in the last build that it's sort of, the icons are there, fine, and it's just a list view that's a bit broken, but that's only because of I uncommented the bits of the theme which make it broke, so that would be normally working properly, but down here you can see that it still says static, so they haven't filled that in, whatever label that was going to say. And also, if you mouse over things down here, they appear as a mouse as you mouse over them. So, they're also slightly broken, but as long as you mouse over them all, they appear. Well, I think that's just at the start. Yeah, if you select one, then that's not broken. So, it wasn't exactly that broken, but it was a little bit compared to this build when it's just completely fussed up and yeah so that was one major thing I noted and just in general this build seems to be a complete step backwards on the last one I mean just from the look when I installed this first and saw this sort of broken rendering on the desktop and some of the bugs I was having when I couldn't change the sound themes which I later learned is because now themes include sound and everything else, if you've got settings, you can now turn on all these things and they do apply. Whereas in the last build, they didn't, it was just uh, obviously the desktop and the window and that. So, yeah, no, that was broken. So, at first, I thought this was like some sort of Franken build that somebody had modified, but then I looked at the hash and it was actually legit. So, it just seems a complete step backwards from the last build, and as if to prove that quite conclusively if I log off yeah that's one of the sounds that's not something I've modified that's one of the sounds the ta-da when you log off if you log off select a username and then press any key on the keyboard you get a blue screen that's it you just have to log off press a key on the keyboard and then you get a blue screen it also says it dumps memory but I've configured this to um, save the crash dumps and it doesn't actually write the crash dumps so that's also a problem which I don't know if it's, I think it's also unique to this build and I need to reset it but and then after you reset it you can see we've got rid of that one shot blue screen which was just the old 2001 whistle on it and now we've got a black blue screen that's all I'm going to say about that there's one other thing you may have just already seen about the logon screen which is slightly changed in this build uh, when it eventually applies the settings to the computer and eventually when we get here 
you can see that in this build you can now click on this unread mail message thing I've added the un unread mail script to the registry as I did in the last build and now if you click on it you get a balloon and it tells you you can log on and choose email from the start menu so I still don't quite know what that command value was all about which is meant to be the one that you launched to open your email I'm not, still not sure where that's used and as you may have heard from that, that was the Windows 95 start up sound that was another reason why I thought this might be some sort of hacked build but no, the professional theme in this build um, mentions um, sets the Microsoft sound as the startup sound rather than the normal Windows 2000 sound and as if to prove that, you can also notice that now even though I have the professional theme on and so it's, it's not quite worked properly because it's still got the classic start menu so that only the background has sort of remained I'm not quite sure why it does that and if you go back to professional it will say it again it also makes this bigger for some reason so yeah there's a lot of bugs in this build but yeah if we go to the sounds see I added the soundless option I managed to get it to work eventually so I set that on because I don't really like sounds in my windows yeah shut up There's one thing that some people may be used to seeing on startup that is new in this build, well, was introduced in this build, and that is the ubiquitous now MS config. Now it's housed in the PC Health directory rather than System32, so I almost missed it, but I went spelunking, and here we are. We have the system configuration utility, and it's just pretty much as it is now. What is it still as it is now? I can't remember. Anyway, as it does in XP, you've got all the normal boot options, the startup things, I don't know what this is. And yeah, one fun thing is on this services thing, it says you can turn off services, but if you try and turn them off, it says essential services cannot be disabled. But if you look down the list, looking in this second column, you can see pretty much every service is matched as essential. So it's pretty useless for turning services off because you could only do it for ones that are installed by stuff you install rather than the Microsoft ones. So you can actually undo any of these services. And for some reason, RPC does not class as a Microsoft service. I'm not quite sure why. But yeah, because it's got a manufacturer of unknown. That is probably why. So that's the main question there. Should have done a bit more research on that. <laughs> I said that. But yeah, it's got this international bit on the end. I don't know if this exists in the final XP version, I can't remember. It's been a while since I looked at it. But yeah, M uh, MS Config starts in this build and it comes up with the same dialogue. And uh, next time I log on, I'll get the thing saying I've changed the configuration, even though I haven't. Also new in this build, well it's not new, it's a carryover from the last build, which was when it was new then, and that is compatibility mode, compatibility mode or emulation mode as it's called now. For some bizarre reason you can set it on folder properties, shortcuts, so yeah, and there's only two at this stage, Windows 95 and Windows NT4. There's also a companion thing tool so you can set it on shortcuts to run shortcuts in emulation mode bizarrely though as of yet you can't set it on individual X's when I find one I will show you if there's one you can't uh, come on mouse there's nowhere to set it on here not even on the advanced tool page so you can't set it on individual X's but you can set it on shortcuts to set it on individual X's you have to go to start and run and type in run compact and then you get this little tool now what you can do is browse for an executable file so if I go and choose one which makes it easily demonstrable that it works and I've got a CMD and then I set it under Win9x full you can also 
log the results, so I'll do that, and I'll delete the log for now. And if you run it, then obviously you get prime prompt, and you might see from that, mm, it's not quite working. But if you do ver, it isn't quite working. <laughs> okay, we'll try that again. I think it does work on one of these, because I did try it out. So we'll try that one. Yeah, there you go, it's that one. And you can see we've got the Win95 version number now, 4.0.950. Obviously if you run ver, then it tells you so. And if you run winver win from here, it sort of it sort of gets inherited because it brings up this null glyph on the end of the build string. Whereas if you just run winver normally it doesn't, so it kind of makes a difference, but it doesn't really change anything since winver looks in the registry rather than any other I don't know whatever get version that's what I'm after we've got compatibility mode in this build and it's yeah you see it gets a log so if you pass log then it doesn't show you anything but you can actually view the raw log and it shows you what it did and you can see that it hooked get version X to return Win95 and all these other good stuff. It hooked the registry to do something. Another new thing causing that blue screen allows you to see is the new system error reporting dialog. When a program crashes, or in this case your blue screen, you now get this dialog instead of the old just the message box thing which said, um, you know, report this to Microsoft because it shouldn't be happening. So now we get this and it, as you can see it looks pretty much identical to as it does in Final XP now, including the undecipherable codes in the error signature, as well as which files it collected, and the privacy policy. So yeah, I don't think that doesn't, yep, report problem doesn't work because it's the server's not there anymore which it was sending it to. But yeah, the new error reporting dialog is now they completely jumped the last one which caused the endless process creation loop with Dr. Watson. That's completely gone now and it's just DW win, which is what that's called. And obviously it runs on startup, checks if there's any dumps, and if there is one, it displays the message. So that's new for this build. There's another bug with the theme, which as you can see from restart, it hasn't quite themed properly because we've still got the classic start menu and all these look like they're in classic mode, even though it should be set as the professional theme. Which also setting that causes this to pump up for some reason. But yeah, one of the problems is that this now isn't themed, the log off buttons, or well, the whole start menu is, well it's not all new, but mostly new, we don't have the name on the side anymore. So, Bob is no longer enshrined in the snap menu, but what's quite... No, oh, let me make that on top. There we go. What is quite interesting about this is that in the professional theme, even before I started diddling around with it, these aren't themed. This bit here, this, there's a gap behind these buttons. But if you set it to the default theme, then it works mostly fine. It's not quite it's not exactly fine, there's a line on the top, but otherwise yeah, it works fine, so I don't quite know what the professional theme has against that little bit of the start menu, but it does, and that's a little, one other little thing I found with this start menu is that they've removed the three pane wide menu. Obviously, like in the last build when I ticked that and opened it, it opened up the three wide one with all the documents in the middle. But now, no matter what you do with that checkbox, you only get the two wide version. So yeah, you can no longer press control and not shift, wasn't it? Yeah, you can no longer press shift and start to get the classic start menu either. So that's another change about it. Another change, which I really shouldn't have mentioned, but here we are anyway, is this picture here has also changed. It now says username on the bottom, which shows it's not from this build, since this build doesn't do this, instead of in the last build, where it was, I think it says Claire, Claire's domain, I think it says Claire, yeah, and it had, they had photoshop and everything, and this mock-up of a 
what looks more like the final XP taskbar. So yeah, and it had my files in, in it and everything, but now it doesn't. One of the usability features I was most looking forward to existing or coming into being does so in this build and that's in the command prompt and that is tab completion. Now using the command prompt quite a lot this quite this helps obviously it's quite time saver when you know what you're doing you can type in any sort of stem and then press tab and it fills up the rest of the file name and also if you're like doing something like directories changing the current directory if you just do that it just names the directories rather than the file so it's quite a helpful little thing now what I didn't know is that this is the first build where it's enabled by default but it also did exist in all the previous builds and in 2000 it's just disabled by default and what I mean by that is it's not in the UI there's a UI switch here this is new for this build so the checkbox wasn't there before but the feature, the thing in the registry which enables it was there in all the previous builds, it was just set to off. And it's here in HKLM, Software, Microsoft, and for some reason this isn't under the Windows key or Windows NT key, it's just there under Microsoft, it's command processor. And what you're looking for is completion chart and path completion chart. Now it's set to tab by default, but you can change it if you'd like to don't know why tabs are the same default so I leave it as that and also you can turn it off there as well you can't select which chart it is from this UI you can only turn it on or off so I think you get tab if you turn it on and off but yeah I use it quite a lot so I was looking forward to that existing and as it did exist I didn't know that but now it's on by default and I do know that so that's quite nice Another thing that's new in this build, and it's not a feature, it's another bug, is if you go to the start menu and click on help and support, rather than getting the help and support, you get an hourglass. And I just want you to take note of the time now that's in the U in the VM, it's 7.57. Now let's just wait and see how long it takes for this to show up. There's also been some slight cosmetic changes to the network connections folder in this build and that's precisely why, because it's called network connections now, not network and dial-up connections. That's the minor change. Also, also, also the home networking wizard actually has functionality now. It doesn't still, it still doesn't quite work properly. For instance, if you try and, you will not fix that one. Yep, so if we cycle through this again and you share this computer's internet connection, this the actual text of what it's going to do actually appears on a separate page now and actually has text in it so you can see what it's going to do. It doesn't appear here anymore. It also tells you you can insert this CD ROM, click on my computer, click on a compact disk drive, and then click on the home networking wizard. Now, I've never inserted an, well, I've inserted many XP disks and I don't think I've ever seen an uh, option for the home networking wizard as soon as you insert it on the drive or on the, the startup screen where it says you can install it, I've never seen that. Anyway, I did that wrong because it hasn't shared the connection, but anyway, in this build, the home networking wizard, it can actually share a connection, so you get a hand underneath the network thing. It doesn't actually let you connect to another computer's connection and use that as the internet yet. It'll say it'll do it and it'll go through it all, but you won't actually be able to connect to it. So it's still not quite fully functioning. Because I had a test from this one in the last build and it didn't quite work with the network between the two. It didn't quite work. But yeah, it can do that. It also doesn't tell you that it will change the IP address if you've set these up as a certain IP address. When it shares one, it will set this to 192.168.0.1. And if you have certain like, network addresses, like I do and VirtualBox does, then it won't work anymore. It also, no it's not that one is it? No it's not that one. It's actually the sharing tab. There we are, yeah. If you enable it through here though, it will tell you that it's going to change it. But it doesn't do that through the networking wizard, so that's still not fully implemented properly. 
And there we are, it's almost three minutes later now. About two and a half, and we finally get just an old, the old CHM. The old Windows Help CHM, it's not new in any way. I don't see why it took two whole minutes for it to, three whole minutes nearly to come on, I don't know why, but there it is, it takes three whole minutes for you to get any help. Okay, it's not strictly true that I don't know why it takes forever. I do know. If we start it off going again, then I open up Wireshark. And start collecting on my network connection. We'll eventually be able to see when it happens. Right, oh, it's a bit out of the way, so let's resize the window. We can see here that, oh no, it's over here isn't it? All these DNS queries here for help files, it's actually sending DNS queries for the help files. So it's like searching for computers with those names on the network. So it's looking for a computer called hardware.chm and that's instead of actually looking at the help file. So I don't know why it started sending out network queries for these help files which are obviously present in the help folder and not just enumerating them on the network, or, I mean enumerating them on the file system because there's a bit of a difference between the file system and networks, they're completely separate APIs as far as Windows is concerned. As we can see if you look in the help thing here, the so Joy was one of them wasn't it? Joy.chm, see it's quite present here and keep and key short. And if we look at where it is now it's down to NW doc. And that's definitely in here, so I don't know why it's sending out network queries, but that is indeed why it's taking so long, because it sends out network queries for every single help file that's in that directory. And then when it's finished doing that, then it finally shows up. So that's the reason it takes forever. Speaking of help though, there is some new help in this build. If we go down to Windows, and then if we get to PC Health, and the help center and the binaries. You finally get to help center. I think I showed it before where it was just the one from Windows ME without any changes. Well, now it has changed and it opens up a hell of a lot quicker than the last one. Then the help, the standard help opens up and you get help and support services. And this is what we get Whistler 32 bit and all this stuff. This doesn't work, this recent news headlines bit, because I am connected to the internet, this, well, this virtual machine is connected to the internet, and it doesn't update, so I think it says somewhere down there that if it doesn't update, it's because it hasn't been implemented yet. Oh, there you go then. Because the recent news headlines are not implemented in this release, so they're not, and you get quite a lot of help topics down here. And you, one of the and where is it? What's new in this release? You can select that, and it don't quite tell you what's new in this. What's new? But it's was NTC how to, and as we know, NTC is. Oh, well, I don't know what NTC is. Netune client. I thought it was before, but now you can see it's some sort of database thing because it's got using data link and data sources. There's also this compile date. Now this doesn't mean the compile date of Windows. It means the well, it's pretty much the same thing though. It's the compile date of the help except it doesn't work. And if you get here, then you're pretty boned because you can't go back because backspace doesn't work. And these back keys up here don't work. And you can't click on any of these as well because they stop working. So yeah, it help is sort of implemented. This new help is sort of implemented, sort of not. These support service things don't work, they should work because the help pages for them are actually in the windows, I've looked for it, but as you can see it doesn't work, it says cannot find server or DNS error. I've also checked it doesn't actually go looking on the internet so I don't quite know why that happens. The backspace key does work when that happens though, so I don't, I don't know why it doesn't work on the compile date thing. You can see with the updates, oh there we go, the, the version of Windows update will be available in beta 2 and not beta 1. So it's not quite here yet and you have to keep going to Windows Update. Now one of the things that I kind of 
want to work in this but doesn't work is this interactive support one here. Now it says get help from others around the world and what this is basically is the remote assistance option from XP's help and I know that because if we go back to PC Health and Help Center if you go to vendors in previous builds this bit has been blank there's been nothing in here but now we have this and if you installed I think it was the last build you may recognize this big long string here as one of the usernames when you install the build it's actually the name of the help account so it's not a secret Microsoft account that somebody's left on there it's just a the name of the help account, the remote assistance help account. And then what we can do is this RC Buddy and RC Expert. Now what these stand for is remote control. So you've got remote control buddy, that's the person who's sending the help request, and RC Expert, that's the person who's answering the help request. And if we go into the buddy one, you see there's a bunch of files here which are named RC screen one, two, three, three, one, four, and status and all that. So this is the It's taking a long time to render. Incident creation. We'll do that for a minute. Look at the first one. Anyway, this is the first screen. Is that open yet? Nope. So we'll leave that. Anyway, this is what you'd get if you clicked on interactive support. I reckon this is what it'd come to. And one of the options would be start a help session, and then you'd get this one. It says let you get live help from a friend and they view it from their own computer and they can control it and then you go next and then you get some basic instructions and you can see we're not called Whistler anymore it's back to Windows 2001 so this has been in development for a while if they're still going with Windows 2001 I'd say it's been in development a while so yeah then you can go next again and then what you can do now is send fill out uh, like a form to send an email to somebody this doesn't work because it's not housed within here, I think there's something special about this container which has some functionality that Internet Explorer doesn't have, and that m makes it work. Whereas if you just try and fill this in, it doesn't. Let me see, there from Bob, is it up there? Oh. I need help. You go next. Oh, did. Actually, this is just the options for it, isn't it? So you can set a password for the help session as you can in XP. And uh, yeah, the send doesn't work. That's it, so you get error on page and the send doesn't quite work. So yeah, anyway, they probably get an email with a link to selecting to you know setting the help session in motion. And then they would probably get maybe at this page and as you can see that's all because this stuff's not quite implemented properly it needs something from the help center that's not in here and there you go this will be the invitation it sends probably in the email then you click yes and if it doesn't work but then that probably start the remote assistance thing so yeah that's all new in this build but it doesn't quite work because it doesn't integrate with the main help center so maybe the next build or further, further on I'm not sure yet we'll see when we get there that's going to just about do it for part 1 come join me in part 2 where we'll actually see some new features in terms of system restores actual restoration and one or two other things which I can't quite remember at the minute see you then